what you said. Now you're stuck with me. Maybe you're up here. One day, that means let's go. So, my name is Barry. I'll be inspiring guys for the next two weeks. Yeah, if you look above your head, you'll see an animal spotting out. Look at me, so I've got to identify some of the animals you see out there on the reserve. Make sure you get your cameras out ready to go if you have the option for this camera. on a high speed or sports mode. I'm going to stop for as many animals as I can, but I can't stop for all of them. Now we're going to head into the Little Atiri Forest. It's home to all sorts of animals that like to hide. They're all really good at it, so you're going to have to keep your eyes open with a little luck because you get the chance to see something out here. If you look to the right hand side, you're going to see the Okapi. Those Okapi are very shy creatures. It's pretty rare to see them out in the open. They're actually so shy, they weren't even discovered until 1901 by Westerners. Those Okapi do have stripes that resemble a zebra stripes, but don't be fooled, it's just camouflage. They're not related to the zebra. Does anyone know what animal the Okapi is related to? Deer. I heard deer. It's a good guess. Any other guesses? Think tall. Giraffe, 10 million safari points for you. They're the only living relative of the giraffe. And they have an 18 inch long tongue to prove it. They use that 18 inch long tongue to clean their eyes and ears. Coming up ahead, the tan animals that will be on the left and the right hand side are kudu. The kudu are the second tallest antelope on the reserve. The males can weigh over 750 pounds. These are females that we can tell because they don't have any horns. Looks like she wants to cross the road, we'll let her. The male could have the longest horns of any antelope in the world. They appear to be over 71 inches long. Call them at a good time. Let's see if she wants to. If you look straight to the left hand side, you're going to see a black rhinoceros laid down out there. Those black rhinos weigh over 3,000 pounds. They have a very narrow mouth with a hook like tongue. They have unfortunately been poached nearly to extinction. There are less than 5,000 in the world today because of that. People poach them for their carrots and horns, which some believe have medicinal properties, but they don't. It's just the same stuff your fingernails and your hair are made out of. It's one of those myths we're trying really hard to dispel here at Rumpin. Oh, and on our left hand side, look over the the bushes out there on the left, you can see a black rhino pretty well on top of that hill. And on the left hand side of the top of the hill, the burnt orange colored animal you'll see out there is a bongo. The bongo are also known as the ghost of the forest because they can run almost silently through the brush. Sabi River. We're told some rumors there could be crocodiles out here. We'll be on the lookout for that, see if we can confirm those rumors or not. It also looks like the rumors crossed the road, but it's not a problem. I'm a professional. I've done this twice. Out on the left hand side, you're going to see some hippos in the water. Hippos can hold their breath for over eight minutes at a time. They're very powerful swimmers. But they prefer to walk along the bottom of the water if they can reach it. They can weigh over 5,000 pounds despite their great weight. They're really fast animals that run at speeds of over 30 miles an hour on land. Also on the island there, the large white bird is the pink bag pelican. Pink bag pelicans get their name because during mating season the feathers on their back actually do turn a slight pink color. A group of hippos like that does have a name. Does anyone know the name for a group of hippos? It is a bloat. A bloat is what you call a group of hippos. A couple of hippos out of the water out there on the left hand side. There's a walking tour. There's a walking tour. 
And also on the left, you can see the Nile Crocodile. There's Nile Crocodile, extremely powerful jaws. That they use to break the bones of prey that's often much larger than they are. They can have speeds of over 10 miles an hour. It's about to make it eight miles an hour, so we'll get out of there before we get the wrong idea. Coming up on the right hand side, you'll get the chance to see what you've waited all day to see. Look to the right hand side of the clearing and you will see a tree. It's a special tree that's made of a tree, also known as the upside down tree because its branches look like roots that extend upwards into the sky. Those baobab trees can live for thousands of years. Now we have just entered the Serengeti. The African Serengeti is home to millions of migrating animals every year, including some of our most famous, like the giraffe and the elephant. This is Wild Africa we're trying to preserve here in Rome in cooperation with the Disney's Conservation Fund. All right, now we're going to start looking for an animal that's just recently been introduced to the reserve. You might or might not see them, but whatever we do, we can't stop up here because we're letting them get used to the trucks. All right, now we're going to look on the left-hand side to see if we can find wild painted dogs. Oh yes, there are some wild African painted dogs straight to our left-hand side. Now again, we can't stop. They live in large groups of 5 to 15. And they hunt in those groups. They're actually very efficient hunters. They're more efficient than the big cats. Looking around, you could see some tall reddish mounds. Those are termite mounds. They sit out here in the hot sun all day long and bake until they turn hard as concrete. There's a termite mound on our left hand side. It's very tall. It can be used by a giraffe as a scratching boost. There's also a termite mound on the right hand side that can be used by antelope. They'll stand on top of it to look into the tall grass and make sure there are no predators hiding. So, pretty much everything out here gets used and reused over and over again, including the lowly termite mound. In the distance on the left hand side at the top of the hill, the great animals up there are white bearded wildebeest. The white bearded wildebeest have one of the largest migratory patterns of any animal in the world. And we are approaching pretty quickly some Maasai giraffe that are on the right, as well as an ant coated cattle. So look down the path on the right, you'll see the ant coated cattle. They have a honeycomb like structure inside their horns that they pump blood through to cool their bodies off. They'll pump warm blood into their horns. Remember that cools down the back of their bodies to cool themselves off. And the giraffe we see here on the side giraffe. We can tell because of the messy leaf-like structure of their spots. When they're born, they're only about six feet tall. They can grow over 17 feet tall someday. They have tons that can reach a foot and a half in length. The hearts that weigh over 25 pounds. They need those really big hearts. So they can pump blood all the way up their long necks to the top of their heads. They also have one of the highest blood pressures of any animal in, a, in the world. And the highest blood pressure of any mammal in the world. We're going to head off towards a place known as 
Monkey Point, and it's called Monkey Point because a troop of mandrel have inhabited the area. That's up ahead on the left hand side. It also looks like we could be entering elephant territory. There's a tree that's been knocked down up here. And we, we know that that's a sign of an elephant because elephants knock trees down so they can eat the leaves at the very top. Hopefully that means we'll get the chance to see some of them down the road as well. But first, like I said, we're gonna be looking for mandrel. Oh yeah, there are some mandrel out there on the left. They're kind of in the distance, so we're going to try and get you a little bit closer. The male mandrel have really colorful markings on their face that they use to attract females and to scare away other competitive males. Now they're down here on the left-hand side, on top of that termite mount, and walking around to the right of the termite mount. Just down the path on the right. Whoa! Looks like my road is closed. That's weird. Um, let me think for a second. You know what? It's fine. I used to take this road all the time. Like six, eight months ago. For some reason, my boss started yelling at me. He said, Barry, you gotta stop taking that road. He was very stern, but I just can't really remember why he told me to stop taking this road, so we're just going to go for it. No, it's, it's coming back to me now. He said, Barry, that bridge is dangerous. you got to stop taking that road. It's fine, everyone. It's fine. Just cross your fingers and close your eyes. That's what I'm doing. We're going to go pulley pulley very slowly over this bridge. I'm going to go a little bit faster. We'll just pray I don't let that sound a little bit faster. Front tires. Back tires, we made it. Ooh, I'm such a good driver. did bring us to the red clay pits. You can actually see in the red clay pits those tusk marks. Those are elephant tusk marks. They like to eat the clay for the minerals it provides. Hopefully that means we'll get a chance to find some elephants a little further down the road. I actually get pretty close to town, so I'll see if I can find your radio station. There we go. Around this top 40. And on the left hand side, you can see those African elephants. They were 10,000 pounds, they got 300 pounds of food a day. I'll stop right here for just a moment and let you grab some photos. African elephants unfortunately face a couple different enemies. Poachers hunt them for their ivory tusk and farmers hunt them to protect their farmland. We have done some research in Rambe. We found out the elephants are very sensitive to bees. Which makes sense, they've got those long trunks with want bees to get inside there. So we use that information to help farmers and continue to build beehive fences around their farmland. That protects the elephants because the farmers no longer see them as a threat so they don't feel the need to hunt them anymore. It also helps out the farmers who can harvest and sell all the honey from those bees. So we can't live peacefully with these large wild animals. You can see them out on the left hand side. They can hold over three gallons of water inside their massive trunks. These are greater flamingo. 
They have a dad of brine, shrimp, and other food that's fresh made of carotene. After about a year of that diet, they developed the distinct pink colors we see today. A group of flamingo like that is known as a flamboyance. On the left hand side, you will see some zebras. They have really powerful hind legs that they can use to break the job of an attacking lioness with one swift kick. Go ahead and grab some photos of about a half of those zebras. Ahead. We're going to start looking for the fastest land animal, the cheetah. 10 million safari points for you. Oh, there are some cheetahs out there on the left-hand side on the hill. They're very hard to see. It's just a tan area with black spots. It's towards the left-hand side of the hill. You can just see the head sticking up. Again, they've got a great camouflage. And they need it. Cheetahs can run at speeds of over 65 miles an hour, but they can only maintain their high speeds for about a quarter of a mile. After that, they're forced to rest for a few hours before they can sprint again. So during that resting time, if they're not very well hit, then they themselves become a target for predators. Another two here on the left. Look to the right side of that hill, just before the very last large tree, and towards the top of the hill. Again, laying down very, very good camouflage. So we'll head out towards a Kobe Rock formation. Kobe Rocks are going to be on the lines. Lions like to stand up on the coat because they can see for miles and miles and look for any potential prey. We'll see if we can find any lions out there. Oh yeah, look to the left towards the tall, the tall rocks. She's in between the tall rocks. It's pretty rare to see them up and active like that. Lions are inactive for 18 to 20 hours a day. When they do become active, it's usually at night. And at night, the female lioness will go hunt while the male stays home to protect his territory. Let's see if we can swing around to the other side of this rocks. Maybe get another angle on her. Oh, on the right-hand side, you're gonna see the white rhinoceros. White rhinos can weigh over 5,000 pounds. They get their name from the Afrikaans word, fight which doesn't mean white misinterpreted that word, the name just kind of stuck. It means wide. They've got wide mouths that they use for grazing. Now there is, oh, yeah, look up on that rock on the left-hand side, two female lionesses towards the top, and then there's a male lion in the shade at the bottom. A lion pride actually controls a really large territory. Their territory is close to 300 square miles. And on the left hand side, you'll see some more hogs out there. Warthogs like to dig burrows deep into the ground and they back into them to keep their tusks exposed. It protects them from any would be predators. On the left hand side, you'll see the ostrich. They can run speeds of over 40 miles an hour and lay eggs that weigh between 3 and 5 pounds. And on the right hand side, some rhinos, well, as well as the brown animals, the bachi bok. They're unfortunately extinct in the wild. You can only find them on reserves like this one, but they're doing very well in reserves. Well enough, we have some day we might be able to re-release them back into the wild and give them a second chance out there.
coming up ahead on the hill. On our left hand side, the white animals with the tan necks are Scimitar and Horned Oryx. The Oryx are desert dwellers, which means they've learned to adapt to some very hot, very dry environments. One of their adaptations, they can let their body temperature rise to over 116 degrees Fahrenheit before they ever start to sweat. Now let's hold on to as much of their precious body moisture as they possibly can. Well, everyone, as we approach the unofficial end to our journey, I'd like to remind you that conservation is not just something to be done on reserve. There are unfortunately endangered animals pretty much everywhere. So when you go home, don't be afraid to do a little research. You might find that there are conservation efforts very close to where you live that you can easily contribute to. If you enjoyed seeing the animals today, my recommendation is to head over to the Pangani Forest Exploration Trail. Uh, it's about a 15 minute hike, you'll go at your own pace. You have the chance to see some of the animals you saw today, like the Akaki, as well as some you definitely did not see. And it's baby sick over there right now. They've got big air cats, baby zebra, and a couple of baby gorillas in Pangani that you could see if you get lucky. If we have any Lotus Explorers on board today, the name of this truck is Simba One. That's SI and the A1, Simba One. Double check your seats and rows, make sure you have all your personal belongings with you before you get off the truck. I know it worked out for Cinderella, for her slipper, but I promise you, Harambe, it's not going to bring your cell phone back if you leave it on this truck. Now, here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye. That's a little too final, too formal. Honestly, I enjoyed having you on my truck. I hope you'll come back and ride with me again sometime. Instead of goodbye, we say Kuaharini, which means go well, and that's what I want you to do today. I want you to go well, have a wild time out there in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Not too wild, though. It is a family jungle, after all. Thank you again so much for riding with the Sip One with me, I'm Spar Guide. My name is Barrett, and it has been a pleasure. Walk well, ready, friends. Welcome back, everyone. Watch your right doors, are okay? Watch your step. Have a great day out there.